Greetings everyone. Today we're going to learn uh, the definition and construction of an ellipse. Uh, this is a definition and construction that is potentially a little bit confusing. Many great mathematicians uh, of antiquity, including Hypatia, Kepler, uh, they had uh, their difficulties with this uh, uh, shape. So we're going to start by reviewing what a circle is so we have a better understanding. You might remember that circle is a set of or a collection of all points on a plane whose distance from a fixed point, in this case C, is a constant. So it's a collection of all points on the plane that are equidistant to a central point C. As you notice, uh, if I move point P around, uh, the measurement here does not uh, change. So that's the definition of a circle. Pretty familiar, pretty intuitive. Now let's study what the definition of, a, of an ellipse is. Definition of an ellipse is, it's a collection of all points P on the plane, this time uh, whose sum of distances from two fixed points, F1 and F2, uh, called the foci, uh, is a constant. So the set of all points P on a plane whose sum of distances from two fixed points, uh, F1 and F2, is a constant. It's a little bit counterintuitive, so let me try to explain what this means. So if I measure this blue uh, uh, segment's length, and if I measure this red segment's length, uh, I'm getting two sort of arbitrary numbers for what we have, and if I find their sum, so if I add this plus that, we get a sum, in this case uh, the sum is 12.58. Uh, observe as I move the point P around, the blue colored segment, its length is changing, it's this one right here. And the red colored segment's length, which is this one right here, is also changing. But observe the sum, their sum, which is right here, is not changing. So it's a kind of counterintuitive definition. Uh, and trust me, if you're having difficulties, uh, many mathematicians in the past have had their challenges with this definition. Uh, but uh, as you work with it, you'll get used to it, and it will become uh, quite actually fascinating. So the question is, how do you construct this curve? How do you figure out a way of making sure that the distances, when added together from the two foci uh, to, the, to the point of, on the ellipse, always going to be a constant? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a construction first, and then we're going to uh, understand why it works, because it is actually not obvious why the construction works. It's a rather simple construction, but uh, to understand why it works might be a little bit of challenging, uh, but uh, no worries. Please open Geometry Sketchpad 5.0 or higher. Open a new sketch. I already have some pages open, so I'm going to open my blank page here. Uh, so we start with a... Point, I'm going to call this point uh, F1 for the first focus. Uh, and then I'm going to have a, another point. Let's call that point F2 for the second focus. And then what I do is I take my circle tool and put a center on the second of the uh, foci that I created and then I open my circle uh, to be large enough to encompass uh, the first focus so it should look something like that we might want to adjust things uh, so that things actually fit in the space that we have so uh, this is a point um, which controls the radius of the circle you'll see in a minute how it's going to be useful then what we do is we take our line tool and from the center of the circle, which is F2, we create a line, uh, and the point, the second point of the line has to be, has to land on the circle. So this is, think of this as a movable point on the circle. It cannot go anywhere, but as it moves around, it drags the line too. Then go to your uh, 
line tool again and make it become a segment tool. And from this point, let's actually call this point maybe M for movable. Grab your segment tool and from the segment, uh, from the point M to F1, uh, create a segment. And what we're going to do is we're going to build the perpendicular bisector of the segment. And if you remember what a perpendicular bisector is, as the name implies, it is a line that is going to be perpendicularly bisecting this segment. So we first construct the midpoint of the segment, and then we select the midpoint and the segment and construct the perpendicular line. And you're going to notice it is going to intersect the original line at a point, and I'm going to call that point P for the point on the ellipse. This is going to be a point that is on the ellipse. Uh, you won't be able to see it yet because I'm not tracing it, but uh, as you move M, you will notice P is going to move in a fashion that will remind you of an elliptical behavior uh, around F1 and F2. Uh, to be able to see what it is tracing and to see it permanently, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select M, which I call the driver of the system, and P, which is the point of interest. Go to Construct, Locus, and ta-da, here is your ellipse. Uh, the ellipse might look a little bit broken, so what I recommend you do is you can select it and go to Edit Properties, and initially it has uh, 500 points that are being plotted. Uh, let's make that, uh, I don't know, a thousand, something like that. Don't go too high, it might really slow the computer. So you'll see here that this point that uh, is driving the system is creating point P, which is a point on the ellipse. A uh, couple of fascinating things about it. As you bring F1 and F2, you're going to notice the, cir uh, the ellipse is becoming very circular. And at that point, actually, uh, the definition of the ellipse and the circle coincide. And as you go towards the edges of the circle, the ellipse is becoming very, very thin. And something actually funky is going to happen. Look what happens. As I cross over to the other side, you create another shape called the hyperbola. It is another conic section, just like the circle and the ellipse. Uh, we don't need to worry about why you get the hyperbola quite yet, uh, but this is what I call a two-in-one construction. If you ever wanted to construct the hyperbola, you could actually use the same idea. Just pull uh, the second, uh, sorry, the first focus outside the circle. Alrighty, so let's actually do this. Um, let me show you how to turn this uh, construction into a tool first. Then I'm going to show you how to, uh, actually why it works, why it leads to a uh, ellipse. So let's select everything except our focus one, focus two, the ellipse. And, uh, believe it or not, this point is very important. This is one of the, what I call the ancestors of the construction. So let's actually do this. Let's select everything and let us unselect the things that we want to keep there. So one, two, the two foci, the ellipse I want to see. And then you'll see in a minute why we need this uh, radius controlling point. Everything else could be uh, hidden. So, uh, right now, I believe we have everything we need to make a tool out of this. And the reason we're making a tool, uh, I'll explain in a second. So let's call this um, ellipse uh, uh, tool. Let's actually test this tool. So the way it should work is you put your first focus, your second focus, and then you need to pull that radius controlling point out and beyond the first focus, otherwise you'll get the hyperbola. Uh, the reason we are doing this is uh, so that you can actually have uh, a tool that you could use for your solar system project, because right now I can now use, again, uh, this 
point, this uh, focus one, as the sun, if you're doing the solar system project. And uh, I put the second focus. I pull it out. As you can see, you could very easily, well, easily, quote unquote, uh, create a orbital system that uh, has all these nested, uh, uh, nested ellipses, and they will all have the first focus, the sun, as uh, their common focus. Let's end this session with an explanation why this works. If you follow this, great. If not, uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much quite yet, but eventually it will be nice to understand it. So what I've done is I've done a little bit of coloring here. You notice that the red and the blue, we're claiming they're going to add up always to the same constant number, the length of the two segments, the red and the blue. Now, if you notice this segment, we have constructed its perpendicular bisector, and you may remember from your geometry classes that any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant to the endpoints of the segment. So any point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, in this case this point, is equidistant to the endpoints of the segment. So let me use some markers here. So what I'm claiming is that this segment and that segment are congruent. Uh, let's put one more here. So observe, as I move around, the blue segments continue to be congruent. And the only thing that is left for us to understand is why the blue and the red add up to the same number all the time. That's actually quite easy to see once you realize, oh, the blue and the red make the radius of the circle, and the radius of a circle, as you know, is always a constant. Uh, this is quite a clever construction, I believe, ordinarily attributed to the Greeks. Uh, and I hope you have some insight how to uh, create uh, an ellipse, understand what uh, an ellipse uh, is as a definition. And we're going to use this in several applications, including the solar system project. I hope you had a good time. Uh, enjoy!